Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good afternoon. My name is Junior Martin, and I'm the head of the School of Technical and Vocational Education at UTEC, in the Faculty of Education and Liberal Studies. I want to welcome you to the afternoon session. And so you are readily engaged to participate in this panel discussion. The topic of focus is really looking at the potential implications of AI, artificial intelligence, on the skill-based learning in Jamaica. So with me are competent specialists who will help us with this topic. And so at this time, I'll ask Dr. Main to share with us her thoughts on the topic. Over to you, Dr. Main. Thank you, Dr. Martin. I want to add to that by saying, Dr. Martin, that artificial intelligence is all of us. It's all of us business, and we need to pay attention to it. And so the panel today is we are going to talk about a critical dialogue on the impact of artificial intelligence on skills-based learning in the Jamaican education system. Why are we doing this critical dialogue? We want to inspire, we want to incite some wisdom about the particular topic, but it doesn't belong to us only. We have to make a collective thinking among all of us as we seek to discuss artificial intelligence in skill-based education. Now, as we seek to engage a discussion on the impact of artificial intelligence on skill-based education, we must critically examine what it means to live in disruptive times. Now, disruptive times transforms or change the status quo. This is interfering with the orderly control of a situation. It's a disruption of social change that can be perceived as threatening to unconventional ideas that have potential to disrupt our society, to disrupt our culture, mm -hmm. our values, our norms, industry, and for this discussion, our education system. Now, disruptive times pushes us to deliberately question, who are we educating? And what is the purpose of education? Now, we are educating Generation Z and the Generation Alpha, and these are natives that are digital natives that spend hours in front of the computer screen. Thus, disruptive times will accommodate a paradigm shift which leads to a change in pedagogy, a new mindset, a new recentering of curriculum conversations on disruptive technologies. Now, Technological advancements such as artificial intelligence is disruptive technology which seeks to break the established pedagogical model of practice that we now know. I question, is it seeking to improve the present model of practice and how beneficial is it is to us? Now in the context of education, artificial intelligence has the potential to disrupt our traditional teaching. In this age of disruptive technology, as they call it, there will be impact on the role of the teacher, the role of the student, and the teaching and learning environment. So how we prepare the students for this environment is going to be critical. Now, there are a plethora of disruptive technologies that are being used by our own students and teachers. These include the ChatGPT, the Quillbot, the Alexa, the Siri, the TensorFlow, the Jasper AI, among many others. Now, ChatGPT right now is the buzzword in education at the moment. How are we examining the impact of this? Now, in an era where the four Cs are critical, how does ChatGPT and other AI tools foster this? 
Now, we talk about social constructivism, which is a social learning theory, as we all know, developed by Lev Vygotsky, where he posits that individuals are active participants in creating their own knowledge. Now, within this process, we know the teacher plays a critical role in facilitating this development. And I'm sure you have this question. Should we worry about our place now in this scaffolding process? Should we worry? In what ways can AI support us? We need to think about that. Now, in rethinking and reimagining AI as a pedagogical tool, we must think about its potential to expand access to education by providing remote and flexible learning options. Could this bridge the gap could this bridge the education gap, especially in areas where traditional education is not available? I reflect on whether we should worry or should we ensure AI is used in a way that complements rather than replaces human educators. I will now want to ask my colleagues about the benefits of AI. Are there real benefits of using AI? Some persons may ask. And based on what we've been talking about all day, and based on maybe the little or much that we know about AI, it is a pertinent question. Do teachers still have a place, or will teachers have a place in the classroom by 2025, 20, 2030 maybe? Yes, no? The teachers have a place in the, in the classroom by then? Yes. I wonder what that place will look like. I see somebody thinking on their face like, are you serious? But yes, AI does allow for the teacher to still have a critical role in the education process. And so in thinking AI, there are certain things that as a teacher, as an educator, we have to look into the benefits or the advantages because, of course, there is nothing we can do about it. We have to find a way to embrace it. We have to find a way to make it our daily, you know, integrated in everything that we do. So, um, when we look at different studies across the world and different inventions, we see where different aspects of AI are integrated in their classrooms, whether it be higher, higher institutions of learning or secondary, primary, etc. So let's look at the teacher's role, for example. Um, in various parts of the world, we see where chatbots chat are used to grade students' work. Um, even for some of us, we would have used things like a Google form, for example, and we know that there are aspects of AI within that. And so when we set a multiple choice paper, for example, we know that our job becomes a little bit easier by virtue of the fact that you don't have to manually mark that paper. We also know that within the Google Forms, there are different features embedded. So it's not just about getting an individual student score, but it also provides some analytical data that gives you information as to how this particular student is performing as against other students in the class or in the group. You can also get an opportunity to see what area of the curriculum needs to be visited, needs to be retaught, and different features of that sort. And we know that Google Form is not the only one, but that's the one that we use most frequently in Jamaica and probably in other Caribbean islands. Um, if we look at the students, we can see great benefits as well. Of course, we know that we have different kinds of learners, different kinds of students in our classes. And so the use of AI helps greatly in allowing students to pace their learning. And so what Dr. Martin mentioned as well um, in terms of AI assistance. And so we find mostly though, um, outside of the Caribbean, we find mostly in Malaysia and countries like those where they are developing different AI tools to benefit their students. I think we'll get there eventually. 
So what you find is that there are systems in place where students can access different resources off campus. Once they enter certain biometric um, data, they are granted access. We find where there are robots in the classrooms that um, assist the teacher in, you know, one an individualized instruction, which once again, in my opinion, and I think you'll agree, that this helps both the student and the teacher. We find as well that some of these, most of these tools assist the student in the sense that the student does not feel as if he or she is um, a dunce, as we sometimes refer to our students, which we shouldn't. But what happens is that this, this, um, these lessons, these content, um, these aspects of content are tailored to fit the needs of each student, so no student is left behind. Um, this benefits both the students and the teachers as well, in that the tool, most of them have some nudging features. So let's say, for example, a student is expected to complete X number of modules by a certain time, which is agreed upon then if the tool recognizes that the student has not logged in over a period of time, it generates that information so the teacher can also follow through to know that, okay, so-and-so has not logged in for however, uh, however long, he or she may not be understanding whatever content is presented, and that will also provide the student with a kind of ladder as they progress, so the teacher and the students can track the progress as they do. And there are many other benefits, but I will not talk forever. Right. So thank you, Carmen. And um, I see where you're focused the benefits of the students. And a little tidbit on the teachers. So should we be worried? So I would like to take the conversation now to Mr. Peter, Dr. Peter, on the benefits, other benefits that we can have from the Thank you, Dr. Peter. Thank you. The rise of the machines. The rise of the machines. I don't remember that before. Let me see how that Yes. This seems to be that you have been following the movies. Indeed. So, Hollywood have painted a picture. Yeah. And three movies come to mind. The. The Terminator. All of those sorts of things. And we hear about AI. AI robot. Will Smith. I wrote. I wrote. I wrote. I wrote. And in the Matrix, by the way. What do they have in common? The movies. These movies are painting a picture that somehow AI in the future, their mission will be to experiment in mankind. That's what picture is in the future. And somehow there is a saving that is going to save us from the future. And so it is very fear in us about the idea. But the truth is, it is a conductor like that. And I stand on the side of AI that is also It's one guy. So the most advanced AI robot is called Amina. Right on that, that name. Can write down A M E C A. Write it down for the Amiga. A M E C A. A M E C A. And I want you to go to your smartphone, please. Quickly. Where is the smartphone? And you have to go to Google search engine. A N E C A and in the Google search engine, type in A N E C A. Right, Amika Robot, right? 
like a Amiga robot. And then you can give an image and you will see a picture of the moon at the time. And the planet. Now, that is the thing. So if you want to have a total TV, so when I refer to Amina, and talk about a prototype of AI technology, which is a platform of future AI technology. She is, when I say she, I should say it. <laughs> but she looks so much like me. Right. So, she has embedded microphone in her computer features. She has a natural eyes, mounted cameras, right? chest camera, and facial recognition software to interact with the And she also has features um, <coughs> like um, articulated motorized arms, fingers, neck, and she can smile, she can talk, she can do it. That's why I love it. So Amiga is the closest thing we have to you. Oh, yeah. no. And it's called you. Now, when they ask, now listen to your question, when they ask Amiga, what can you do for you? Here is her response. I can tell people with disabilities. So like, <laughs> she can work with education. Provide assistance in hazardous environment. So like, keep it up. <laughs> right? Conduct the search. That's what she said she can do. So like, I can do. But don't laugh at this one. She said that she can act as a companion for you. So if you are lonely, I'm here to be the most friend of the universe. So, can I a problem with that? So, so when you look at Amiga, it is not far-fetched as to what the capabilities are in terms of AI. Yeah. So we do have a role that can exist and understand. So for us in TV, in our labs, in our skill base, training, Amiga can be programmed, we can use these sophisticated algorithms and program But I know she does a commercial school. But it can be So, I'm going to be ethical issues, ethical considerations in Amiga. For example, if she's my first time combined, if she's my first time combined, and I have an assignment, and I say, and she does it. 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 do she does it. And she does it. And now, Amiga, I mean, they, 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 how do you detect plagiarism? When Amiga write my paper for me, I'm going to generate it through the internet where we can use other forms of technology to test for plagiarism. Amiga is excited. Amiga could do my exam and that's why you we don't have a short screen from the US. And that's what we are saying. That 
is good for another ethical issue for us in the United Church. And we have to respond to that. So the point is, who has control over 
of Earth. What's control? Which nation would have control over its citizens? What is the implication, not just for data governance, but governance, politics? What happens when persons are displaced out of jobs and the income taxes below the level it should be? Expenditure we funded for. Who are the new, what you call, generators of income? Earlier today, we, a question was posed about export. That was it sufficient to have centers of excellence when generally the population of Jamaica, does, or Caribbean, does not have a strategy to protect intellectual property. The point is, the intellectual property, as we know, an intellectual property law, will no longer be relevant. Now, have we been thinking about this? Yes, those who direct certain things within the global sphere, they have been thinking about it, and they have, in fact, made many kinds of experiments about universal income. <coughs> and universal basic income is to say when persons are displaced from their jobs, what they will get each month populated to their account is a basic amount for their existence. Is that what we await? Or should we be into the market to ensure that we are not just users of these tools, but producers of these tools. So we must now begin to think of education and research and value and innovation as a critical component of the team that we have. And, and, and within the Caribbean, if we are to ensure that we can provide for our people and that we do not have a repetition where we've got a few, not yet two, centuries, yes, one century, from the plantation to return to something which is far worse because you are educating, you have access to it, but have no control over social or economic um, substance for self. And the purpose of education as a common goal for self-actualization and all, what then will motivate one to pursue education as a group? Um, I would, I would think we could go more into other things and we could say what has been done. Um, it's, in terms of policy, it's not all what we would say a desert field. In Jamaica itself, a new school curriculum that we do have um, a few years now, it has addressed the issue of how we integrate STEM and how we address employment-based and critical thinking skills in the education system. So the policy framework is in place, and we need to focus on this and do more and ensure that throughout the entire um, Caribbean, we do CXC as a common exam and, and own that country, and therefore we need to do more and integrate more across the Caribbean in education wise to ensure that we become creators in this revolution and not just persons who accept tools to be used because then, then we must recognize we are mere tools in the hands of those who exercise for Thank you. 
for AI innovation in our classrooms. Now across the Caribbean region, we need to sensitize students, teachers, and the society. But most importantly, we need to recenter the curriculum conversations around AI. We need to be talking this language. It's not going away. It's all of us that's a language of possibility right now. So curriculum innovation and change is never an easy one. And as we know in a post-colonial context, change is definitely a difficult one. Now according to Fuller and Comfort 1991, they wrote that we need to understand the need for change. We also need to understand what is the goal of this disruptive technology. We need to look at change as a possibility for improvement of new teaching approaches and a new philosophy. So how are we getting ready? What do we need to do? What do you say, Doc? What do we need to do to get ready? I, I think we can be guided by something which has been uh, just over a year ago and uh, published um, UNESCO um, acting through the United Nations um, actually all countries, 193, had an acclamation in relation to ethics and artificial intelligence. And it sets out a roadmap for all nations to seize the opportunity now rather than later to ensure that we are able to be a player in directing the path of artificial intelligence development to focus on what will be appropriate regulatory framework, what laws ought to be in place to protect human rights, to protect persons from to protect national security, to protect cyber protectors from cyber attacks, etc. And also to put some kind of restraint where necessary on the development of artificial intelligence technology. And sometimes that starts with a thematic um, impact assessment. And I would say that that is called action for all Caribbean nations within the, the space to begin to do that because nations are actors themselves. But they are aware, and that is why they have participated, all 192 countries, in this population. The, the European Union is just putting out laws with respect to how they will protect their citizens. What is the part of Caribbean response? They, they, we, we, we do have a number of these things on the line. What should be the nature of public education for AI so that persons become aware? And so there are social implications, economic implications, and governance implications and politics. May I say this? as was mentioned earlier, before the theory of labor, which relates to the question of the development of Marxist philosophy about labor. When it's not labor and machine, what's the relevance of that theory? Who is doing the theory building for the 21st century in this new revolution that we have? And this is a call for new contexts, for new philosophies, and new theoretical building to address the interaction between humans and machines. Thank you very much. Panelists, and so we have heard quite a lot as it relates to AI, looking at that intersection between AI and the field of TVET. You know, looking at the benefits, challenges, risks, implications. We have heard a whole lot. 